Okay, microwave centering. This is a one type of centering using electromagnetic wave, microwave. And uh, use electromagnetic wave, typically in this frequency range, 0.3 to 300 gigahertz, like, like similar to our cell phone, our microwave. And our wavelength from one millimeter all the way to 1,000 millimeter, which means the wavelength is roughly the same dimension as your typical sample, from one millimeter to three meter. That's the wavelength for the microwave. Okay, and the heat generated internally within the material. That's an advantage. And in principle, we can get to high heating rate, 1000 degrees C per minute, that's pretty fast. You think a big furnace is by conventional heating, it's difficult to get that whole thing up to 1000 degrees C per minute. Okay, that's a good thing. Material interaction with microwave, so it's complicated. We don't go into the detail. Some of the material are so-called opaque, reflects microwave, like typical metals. Microwave comes, microwave goes back. Okay. That's for metals. But certain ceramics, they are transparent to, to microwave, which means the microwave goes in, it goes out completely with no reduction in the amplitude or energy. The microwave just penetrated. We actually use these type of ceramics for container for when we cook using microwave, right? Essentially, these type of ceramics. But some of the material are microwave absorber. They are so-called lossy insulator. Lossy insulator, which means you have certain power of mic microwave going into the material, but what's coming out gets lower, which means where does the energy go? It got absorbed into the material, and it's the absorbed amount of energy that heats that thing up. If it's transparent, then it doesn't heat up. It doesn't heat up. It has to be absorbing like silicon carbide, chromium oxide. Okay. So microwave sintering, the power generation is by microwave heating, of course. And the power, watt, is given by this equation. Okay. We don't go into the detail, but let's just look at the parameters. This so-called E0 is electrical field amplitude um, electrical field amplitude okay how much of electrical essentially vibration we are providing f is for frequency of my microwave okay dielectric vacuum permittivity that's the epsilon zero okay epsilon r relative dielectric constant for the the real part here we are talking about the real part for that material okay tangent da data is a loss tangent for the dielectric material okay here we are not physics so we don't go into the detail but okay let's say we know this parameter which we would know how much of a power or heat dissipation would happen in within the material and then for microwave, we are talking a parameter people call skin depth. How deep the distance with into the material that uh, the electromagnetic uh, vibration would reduce. The amplitude would reduce to 1 over E of its surface value. But essentially, it's a how fast the material absorb microwave within it, how deep. And it is given by this equation. C is speed of light. Okay. The other parameters are same as what we defined before. And for microwave in metals, the skin depth is only one micron within metal, which means the majority of the microwave kind of dropped within the metal okay for metal but in aluminum oxide it can go pretty deep the microwave can penetrate pretty deep into the material okay and uh, because of the like communication limitation quite often 
the microwave that you can purchase has a pretty much fixed frequency. 2.45 gigahertz for communication. The FCC limits what's the frequency people can use for microwave uh, purpose. And so as a result, the parameter that would determine the microwave heating is pretty much limited to the uh, I did a the mistake here. It's a relative uh, dielectric constant. It should be a relative dielectric constant. Yeah, because vacuum permittivity is a fixed number. Yeah, relative dielectric, um, dielectric constant and the loss factor for the material. Okay. Yeah, vacuum permittivity. That that is a constant. Okay. So continue for microwave sintering. The relative dielectric constant and the, as we said, the loss tangent change with temperature. Here we see the plot on the left shows the change of relative dielectric constant that epsilon r prime versus temperature for different uh, types of material. And you see that, okay, they change, but the extent of change is pretty small, not a big change, like from 9 to 11. Not a big change. In comparison, we also show the loss tangent, the tangent data versus temperature for different material. And here we see a much larger change from, it changed probably by a factor of 10 or even higher for these other material. Okay, so essentially we say, although dielectric constant and loss tangent determines how much of a heat generation within the material by uh, microwave, the primary factor is actually more significant due to the loss tangent, okay, especially due to the temperature effect. So as a result, sometimes people would uh, preheat the sample and then so that to higher temperature, you would higher, have higher loss tangent and then apply your microwave. Preheat and then apply microwave. Okay, microwave sintering. Sometimes it offers enhanced sintering or enhanced densification by faster heating in some situation. Okay, here we are showing relative density versus temperature for microwave sintering versus conventional sintering. You see, okay, within certain temperature, it appears that microwave sintering gives some advantage. Make sense? At the same sample temperature, the microwave sintering seems to be give much higher density. But of course, for even for conventional sintering, as you increase the temperature, you are eventually catching up. Okay? Here we are showing another example. The first example is for magnesium doped aluminum oxide. The second example is for sintering of zirconium diboride with boron carbide additive. Here we are again plotting relative density versus sintering temperature. We see, okay, when the temperature is relatively low, the microwave sintering offers a some advantage. But when the temperature goes higher and higher, they're more or less comparable, okay? So, but you see, it kind of makes sense as you go to higher and higher, even conventional sintering can deliver the same relative density, okay? Then we talk about, okay, there are some advantages with microwave sintering, but there are a lot of issues or challenges with microwave sintering, okay? Or, or the so-called alternative sintering. One is temperature measurement compared with conventional sintering is more difficult. The reason being people find there are interactions between the microwave and uh, thermocouple. The, the, the parameter, the device you put in to measure the temperature, there's some interaction between those, which make temperature measurement difficult. And, and as a result, people quite often use optical method, pyrometer to observe and determine the sample temperature. Okay, using the infrared, essentially the light, to measure the temperature, which is more, I wouldn't say 
too difficult, but at least、uh, it limits you the capability. Especially below certain temperatures, the sample does not heat up. You have no, not much infrared or visible light to help you determine the temperature, and not even reliable. Okay, and then microwave sintering still suffers from green growth, rapid green growth at the end of the sintering, end state of sintering, especially when relative density goes above around ninety percent. It's not like a microwave sintering; you can completely avoid the excessive green growth. Towards the end, it still grows rapidly, okay, which is detrimental for mechanical property. And then you have very limited frequency choice, not in in theory, but just in practical reality. The FCC, Federal Communication Commission, limits the frequency you can obtain for a microwave generator, and quite often people are talking about a few fixed frequency, and among of them, the 2.45 gigahertz is the most common one, and the next is 28. Everything else is very hard to come by this、uh, generator, which means you cannot easily do your experiment with other frequency. Which means you have you lose one knob for you to turn. Make sense? And then it still suffers from the issue of non-homogeneous heating. Although we say okay, the microwave can penetrate into the material, but it's still not homogeneous heating. You probably have first-hand experience with just microwave heating food. You find okay, even that sometimes some part is cold, some part is hot. Okay, same for doing sintering, and uncontrollable heating, especially for complex shape. Sharper region may have faster heating than bulk material. Common sense. Okay, and、uh, people still lack fundamental understanding of the sintering mechanism for microwave sintering. And、uh, for example, people are debating about the claim of so-called reduced. Activation energy for diffusion, and claim for energy saving also questionable. Sometimes people say by doing microwave sintering we can save energy, but that claim is still debatable, not set in the stone. For especially for industrial large scale sintering, when heat source could be chemical fuel instead of electricity. For conventional, I'm talking about conventional sintering. Okay, so in that sense, microwave may not offer you too much advantage for energy saving. And then the take-home message is that despite all those studies on microwave sintering, after many many years, even as early as 1992, people came to the conclusion microwave sintering has yet to find a broad application in ceramic industry. And that was 1992, and nowadays another, I don't know, 27 years passed. It's still the situation. Microwave sintering is still a very small niche for maybe research purpose, but not real for industry application. Okay, but at least you know, okay, that's such a thing.